So now's my chance to just say a few things. And this will be very short uh, in terms of what I'm going to say. But um, I, you know, I asked my faculty and staff uh, colleagues, and I know I met with the Dean's Advisory Council this morning, so um, some of this will be repetitious to them, but maybe now um, they can, um, they'll hear it, really, um, from, from the first time. Um, but people said to I said, what do you think this audience is most going to want to hear from me? And they said two things. One is they don't know you at all. And so they might want to know something about you. And I said, OK, that's fine. And why am I here? And then maybe what do I see as the dean of this number one ranked school um, that was great for me to inherit, right, um, in terms of the business landscape and how do we, you know, what does the future look like? So in a short amount of time, I'm going to talk about those two things. And oh, thanks. What do I do with this? Oh, how does it work? Ah, great. OK, good. I didn't get training beforehand, sorry. OK, so I wanted to first just think about maybe telling you a little bit about um, why am I here and who am I? And I think that really I'm here for all the, probably the same reason. I don't know where I'm pushing this. Where are we? Go? OK, there we go. I think that I'm, I'm really here for all the exact same reasons that you all are here. Why are you here? on uh, today's Thursday, right? Thursday afternoon, a busy time probably for all of you, giving up an afternoon to be here at Villanova. And um, you're all incredibly busy people, whether you're faculty, whether you're staff, whether you're alumni, whether you're in corporations, um, you're leading those corporations. I mean, you're incredibly busy. And I think that I'm here for that exact same reason that you are. And I think this just goes to the fact that all of us truly believe in tomorrow. We believe that tomorrow could be a better day. Um, we're positive about what can happen tomorrow. And I think we all in here believe that we have to, step by step, build today to make that tomorrow. And so I've often heard, you know, sometimes people think about legacies. And they think that you wait until the end of your life, and then you kind of work on, oh, yeah, what's my legacy? And I think we all recognize that that's not how it works. But the way it works is you have to live your legacy every day by the choices and decisions that you make. And so I really believe, like all of you, that Villanova is the place where we can do this, where we can live our legacy and really give back. And this notion about Villanovans being called to ignite change, that's not just a tagline. Um, in the short two months, Yes, it's only been two months that I've been here. Some people are counting it by the weeks, um, others by the days. <laughs> but um, it's, I think I've learned that Villanovans really believe this, that they are here for some special purpose, to really make change happen. And that's certainly why I'm here. So I think about, I, I love to share with you the vision, just to remind us again of what is it that in the Villanova School of Business we're trying to do. And what's important to us? Because this certainly is something that resonated with me and why am I here uh, and wanted to be here. So if we think about this learning environment unprecedented in the world of business education that transforms lives, you just heard from our students, right? That's certainly one of the things that drew me here were the students. Um, and, you know, the, the things that they're thinking about, transforming lives. So if you think about, they're not just thinking about how can I get a job and make more money, which is great, and we want them to do that, and we want them to be successful, but they're also thinking about what is it that I'm going to be able to do that's going to really impact society, that's going to make a difference. I think that's why all of you are here, and why, why would you be at Villanova versus some other business school or some other enterprise? That's certainly been important to me. All those aspects of, yes, we want to nurture creativity. We want to have an analytical approach. And we have a lot of strength in those areas that we want to have a global perspective. And a number of you sit on the Center for Global, um, Center for Global, yes. <laughs> yes, and leadership, as well as our Center for Analytics. All those are so important. And we want our students to be really well prepared for all of that. And that's critical. Um, but in the end of the day, a lot of business schools focus on these kinds of things. What do we do that's unique here at Villanova is that we're trying to get people to be ethical leaders, ethical business leaders. That is not an oxymoron. Ethical business leaders like all of you. 
that are people who really are going to make a difference and that really show um, earlier this morning, and I'm trying to look for where he is that talked about, yes, talked about how we're a school where um, our students actually don't get into jail, right? <laughs> yeah, so we have business students that are really um, making um, great decisions and they're leading their lives in an ethical fashion. So those are important. And then of course, what appealed to me, why am I here, same thing, why are you here, is the Augustinian mission. Um, having gone through all Catholic education myself, um, I, and that's my identity, um, people always say, why do you have two middle initials? And one of them is my confirmation name, what, which a lot of people think, okay, that's a little odd, but I did that from eighth grade on because um, that was just who I am as a person. Um, that's a big part of my identity. Um, I do believe that I'm very open and inclusive, and I think our community is here to people of different faiths and backgrounds, and that's really important too. And that's part of the Catholic faith too, to be open to other views and, and, and points. So the Augustinian mission certainly really resonates with me, that Catholic mission. Uh, so thinking critically, acting compassionately, serving others. Um, I had the pleasure of being in the, um, coming to the, my first St. Thomas of Illinois day of service, and as I was walking, I brought my husband and my daughter and um, they said, so we're going to do this. And I said, yes, that's why we're here. We're here. And those are the things we're going to do because this is fabulous. And they had a wonderful experience. Um, of course, it might have been influenced because my, because Coach Jay came over and talked to my daughter for quite a while. So that was kind of nice too. Um, he's like taking her under his wing, which has been really sweet. Um, but, you know, I think this notion of serving others. And so our two students who talked about this and what they're trying to do in terms of giving back a lot of our students talk about that. All of you talk about that. That's really important. So it's this notion of being ethical leaders who create this positive change. So our vision, our mission, is really, for me, why I'm here. And I think it's the same reason why all of you are here and why you're still here, um, because you believe in all of these things. So just another couple thoughts about how I fit in. And you know, it's interesting, because I talked to so many colleagues who now know I'm here, and they're like, oh my gosh, who know me, who say, that is so perfect for you, and in terms of who you are as a person, who know me really well. And I think it's some of these points. I also, as I got a chance to talk to our Dean's Advisory Council uh, this morning, got to talk about how the fact that, for me personally, over the last 30 years, and actually even since undergrad days, and yes, I did go to a Jesuit institution, but Father Peter's not here, so I could say that. Um, it is, you know, the, the importance of, I've always been working with businesses. Uh, so some of you know um, my background, I'm an industrial organizational psychologist, so that's anything to do with people at work. Like all those problems y'all have, that's the stuff that I have done research on and done work in. You know, motivation, leadership, negotiations, conflict, teams, all those things, the things that people don't like to deal with. Um, but I've always learned that's really important to connect academia to business, to government, um, to make sure that we're, so we're all interconnected. And as I told the Dean's Advisory Council, we in a business school cannot be successful, in, successful unless we're connected to business. We have to know what's happening in business. We have to know what the issues are. Our researchers, our great faculty who are studying what's going on in business, they want to know what's really going on. So from a research perspective, from a teaching perspective, it's all important, so having those connections. And I also support what we often call the triathlete model. I, that's how I was trained to believe in the importance of teaching, research, and service, service to the profession, and service to the community. And this is, this is the model here. Um, it's certainly the model, I think, of the entire university, that all of those things are important, and that if we build and elevate any one of them, we, we are also trying to elevate all of them. Um, I know that's very important to all of you. We have this great personal connection with our students. So even as we elevate research, we will continue to make sure that that is really important, that teaching is very important, that service is very important. And then having a liberal arts background myself and coupling that with business, I think that's really important. I think that's unique about Villanova. You don't find that in every business school. And sometimes students say, can we not just start talking, taking business courses right away? And I would say no. You have to understand the broader perspective. So these collaborations, the fact that Christine talked about from engineering, I've talked to a number of the deans at the other, and I see one of our deans here, Deb, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, but I think that's great. We should be cross, 
um, coming up with cross-disciplinary programs and collaborating with others in these different fields. And I think that's really important to have business students to have the strong liberal arts background. It gives them great critical thinking skills. It gives them a more holistic perspective. So that really appealed to me. And just the notion of being well-rounded. Um, I think that we're talking about developing people who have strong academic credentials. And clearly that's the case here. I, mean, I know I've heard that from a lot of people ever since I started talking to people about, what do you think about Villanova? And they all said, great academic program. But strong development in terms of their personal side and spiritually. And all of those go together in terms of this well-rounded. And I think that our, our tagline, building business leaders for a better world, that is who we are. That is what we're trying to do. And wouldn't we not all agree, and I feel like a zealot about this, that this is so important today that we need strong, ethical business leaders today, uh, more than we ever have before. So we are positioned to, to help build those leaders that are so needed today. So that's how I fit in. Some of you have been asking me, well, what have you been doing? You've been here for two months. What have you been doing? Um, so I have been um, on my listen and learn tour and trying to talk to as many faculty, staff, students uh, as I can, uh, meeting with campus leaders, getting out there to see what's going on on campus. How can we possibly partner with engineering in issues like cybersecurity or sustainability? How can we partner with the other colleges? Um, and what is, uh, you know, the ICE Institute, what else is going on on campus? Uh, obviously talking to athletics um, as well because they have interesting issues in, and questions about business and, and, and athletics as well. Um, talk to a lot of external people, thanks to Kevin and Brendan and all these guys have been taking me out and letting me meet with all kinds of people. Met with lots of parents, some of you as parents, which has been fabulous because you get just different perspectives and views about what is it that we want to do to get to that next place for Villanova. Um, and then the students have been fantastic. I mean, we have great students here. Uh, the undergraduates, I've probably eaten more donuts than I have in a long time. <laughs> but the undergrads are, are just, they are um, incredibly passionate. They love this place. Uh, our graduate students feel the same way. As I was walking out uh, late last night from our event, I ran into one of our graduate students who, you know, this is a great, let me just give you this little quick point. So he said, I just stopped him and said, so how come you're leaving at this hour? It was like 9 o'clock. He said, oh, I'm just coming out of class. And I said, well, how are things going? And he said, um, well, they're going well, but I was really worried initially. MBA student. He said, because I'm 60 years old, and I was worried about fitting in. And I asked the students in my first team assignment, they, everybody said, well, how do you all feel? And how are things going to work out? And he said, I'm kind of nervous because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to fit in with you guys. And they said, this is what you need to do. And he said, and from that time on, uh, he's also learned a lot about social media now, he said. <laughs> so he's like a social media expert. I said, you are, that's great. That's a smart strategy. Um, but that's how the community is. And he talked about how the community has been. All these students are much younger than him, that how they've been so welcoming and, and so our students, I can't say enough about them, but I'll, but I'll stop there about them. And then just looking at what's going on in terms of all of our internal processes. So those are the things I've been doing. Um, and so in terms of some of the things I've seen, so people ask me this question a lot. You're an outsider. What have you seen? What's going on? And I have come from you know, 30 years of academia and worked with you know, different uh, schools. I worked with a lot of businesses and consulting um, for the last 30 years. And so I've seen lots of interesting things and worked with a lot of um, uh, universities around the country, uh, clearly our students are just an incredible selling point, whether those are the undergrads or the grad students that are all fantastic. I see some of our graduate students here, over there, EMBAs. Thank you for coming. And um, strong applicant pool. I think many of you in your councils today, I'm not going to go through the stats because you got those. And our stats are just phenomenal in terms of bringing in more students, higher yield of students, incredible credentials of our students, both graduate and undergraduate. Um, they leave highly motivated, great work experience. That has truly impressed me, the number of internships that our undergrads have, the number of study abroad experiences they have. Even our graduate students, all these immersion experiences that they're getting has been so phenomenal. Our faculty, 
um, are doing some really, I, I hope you have the chance to talk to some of our faculty, they're doing some really interesting research. And then they're doing a lot of really mission work that you don't see in a lot of universities. Sometimes you'll see people doing research that it's just about this sort of area of research and it doesn't really impact too much of anything else out there. And our faculty are doing research that is on the cutting edge and it's research that connects to um, the world out there and makes a difference out there. And I think that's really pretty important. And then all of you with our centers, our advisory councils, all the expertise that people are providing, that's really important. And as a business school, we, we really appreciate that. It, it's so important for us to partner with you so that we can learn from you, you can learn from us, and it's a good partnership. Um, our staff, we have a lot of staff here. Where are our staff? Just wave, all you staff. I mean, they are so dedicated and professional. Thank you all for being here. And then all the work that you all do. It's unbelievable. I'm so impressed with, I mean, I don't think these people sleep. I mean, they are working behind the scenes all the time to make all the rest of us look good, um, for sure. And our corporate partners and alums. You know, people have said to me, so what's different about Villanova? And I'm like, you cannot believe the alums there. They're just, well, actually, some people knew that. They told me that. They said, wait till you get there and you see the alums. Um, and I was like, yeah, they'll be really great. I'm like, no, you don't have any idea how great they are. <laughs> really, we're all of our alums. Come on. Look at all these alums. OK, thank you um, for being here. Yeah, you're definitely the zealots, right? And this is what happens. I think Father Peter was right. Something in the water. It's like they become your students. You're like in this cult. And then you go out, and you're still part of it, right? Um, and you love this place. And I think that's fantastic. And that's unique. I don't think you see that every place, that how engaged people are. Um, and that's so impressive, and it's something that we really want to hold on to. I mean, it's just incredible. So those are some of the things that I've seen. I've seen some other great things as well. Um, we're doing some great things in terms of media. And um, our, our marketing team, this is really important. Many of you are in business. You know how important this is, uh, that we're out there talking about what the great things are our students are doing, what our faculty are doing. Um, and so we have to continue what our alums are doing. We want to continue doing that. And that outreach has been fantastic. As a business school, it's important to help outsiders understand, why do you guys do research? What is that useful for? And so they get it sometimes in the other schools more than in business. And so we have to translate. And that's important. And we're doing a fantastic job in trying to show that outreach. Uh, facilities. Uh, clearly, we had this great event last night, the Kevin M. Curley Family Exchange. Uh, if you've been over to Bartley, and some of you have, um, I would encourage you, if you haven't, make sure you're over there to look at some of the new classrooms. Uh, that's a question that people ask me. Well, how are, how are our facilities compared to other business schools? So we're going to continue to tour other business schools because one of the things that's important is we can't look at our facility relative to campus. We have to look at our facility relative to other business schools, other top business schools. Because our students, as I met a lot of freshmen, and I said, why'd you come here? Why'd you pick Villanova? And they gave me all kinds of reasons. They love the community. You know, I tell you, one of the, the, the reasons, the, the biggest reason I heard was, well, I actually came here on a dark and dreary, dismal day, kind of like today, but like cold. And I was like, I don't know if, what I'm going to think about it. And then the student who took them on the tour just pulled them in. And they were like, I never even wanted to look at a school after that. I loved this place so much. So that seems to happen a lot. Um, and it's interesting because we have to, um, but they do look at the, they look at the facilities. And they look at, what does a school look like compared to other schools? So we're always, we've done some great upgrades. I think our classrooms and some of the things we've done are fantastic. I was delighted when you know, Pat was talking about all the people that were going to end up in uh, the Kevin M. Curley Family Exchange, because that's a great place to end up those tours and to talk about the business school. Um, can we do more? Absolutely. Uh, because we are competing with the top business schools. So we will always be looking at this. And remember, students always come, and parents, looking at this school versus another school. So we always want to be on top of those things. But we are making some great progress. Our graduate space is another great place. The curriculum, really some innovative things. And all the kudos goes to the faculty and staff that have been involved. Where's Daniel? Daniel, flag yourself back there, right? Yes, thank you. For all the work that he's done, especially on that recent KPMG, 
Sorry to bring them up to some of you competitors, but that recent new program with the masters of accounting with the analytics in there, I mean, this is really important work that we're doing in the analytics space. That is so critical. Um, but just a lot of really innovative programs that we're doing. And as I told the Dean's Advisory Council, we're not just going to keep creating new programs so that we have all of these programs. That's not a good strategy. We want to be strategic about what we're in and do well with what we're creating. Uh, and so I think we just have a great baseline for the things that we're in at this point. Career advising, we're doing some fabulous things. You heard the students talk about that. Um, and, and where is Melinda? Melinda? She's wearing blue. I love that. <laughs> uh, and so we know that the Clay Center, the O'Donnell Center, and that was supported by a lot of people in here, your initiatives. We really appreciate that. Um, career advising is important. It's important to our undergrads. Um, we're starting to do a lot more just when they walk in the door as freshmen. But it's also important to our graduate students because only about a third of the graduate students will probably stay in their firms. Most of them will be career switchers. So we have to provide more career services and support and advising for them as well. Um, so we've got you know, some work to do in all of the space, but so do a lot of other business schools because th these are new changes that are taking place in business schools. Um, and then student outcomes, wow. Okay, where do you get to go to a business school where you have over 98% placement? I mean, that's just incredible. And, and, and so for, at first, I was just trying to figure out where's that coming from? And so that's coming from you all of being so actively engaged. And I remember one um, executive said to me, well, I look at all the Villanovans first and make my hiring decisions, and then I look at the rest of the pool. And I was like, gosh, that's music to our ears. We love to hear that, right? That's fantastic. So these are just some of the things that I've seen in the short two months that I've been here, uh, in terms of some of the great things that we're trying to do. Uh, clearly, we've already talked a lot about the rankings, and um, that will help, because I have had some students say, when I said, why did you come here? And these are some of our presidential scholars, and they said, well, actually, I was looking at Notre Dame, but then you guys were ranked number one. And I was like, oh, thank you. Uh, you know. And so, and so I decided to come here. Uh, and so the rankings do play a role, and I know we've talked about those a lot so far. I think we've shared this data with many of you today, but we just wanted to share from the Villanova standpoint uh, for the school business um, and our team with um, Kevin Noller, which many of you know, and Brendan. Where's Brendan? He's, there's Brendan. Um, and now Casey is joining us. Where's Casey? Yeah, there she is. She's going to be joining us next Monday, right? Um, so, but they've done a fantastic job in terms of fundraising for the school, Said our goal is 125 million, so we're pretty close to that. Uh, and that's really important um, for what we're trying to accomplish and then to get us to that next place. So thank you all for your uh, work there. So I think we're in great position um, to be part of this national university. Uh, and the, the landscape has changed out there in business schools as to what we need to be doing, just like the business world has changed. So I want to share just a couple things about the landscape. And I shared some of this with our Dean's Advisory Council this morning. Um, the model for business schools has changed in terms of revenue. It, it's not that you get all your revenue from a university. The model has changed where you basically get your revenue from entrepreneurial programs and from fundraising. Those are your two big sources of revenue to be able to make things happen. So we're building our entrepreneurial programs. Those are all of our specialty masters, our MBA, our summer business institute for the minors, um, some of those kinds of programs. Partnering with other parts of campus. I mean, that's just kind of in my blood anyway, but, and we've already been doing some of that. Um, but that's what we see in the business landscape, is that a lot of business schools are partnering with their medical units on campus um, for, for joint dual degrees. They're partnering um, with engineering. Um, Deb and I have talked about potentially partnering with um, continuing professional studies. Um, so there's a lot of places that we can partner. It's not just about degree programs, because people want to get certificates and additional kind of learning and that sort of thing. So what other ways can we creatively partner? Because we're at a great time now in business, at a business school where a lot of people want business background. I mean, we have people really wanting to get into the business school for a major or to get into the minor program. And so how can we partner with people? Uh, innovative teaching. I've talked a little bit about this, but this is really key. Uh, you know, our faculty are phenomenal. They have great personal attention with students. 
Uh, and one of the things that actually really impressed me is that so many of our very experienced faculty, uh, i.e. have been here for longer, right, uh, were some of the first people to jump into teaching in the online space. And that I thought was remarkable because that often doesn't happen. They're usually the last people to jump into something different and new. And here, they were like amongst the first people. And they said that's because they wanted to be on the cutting edge. And, they, and, and that just shows how committed the faculty here are to teaching and the mission. So there's a lot that's going on in this space in business schools about changing the model of teaching, making it much more experiential, doing all these immersions and activities. A uh, Couple other things that are happening in business schools just like in your companies, diversity, right? Uh, I think that you saw when uh, Pat talked about sort of the new structure that uh, Dr. Terry Nance as a chief diversity officer that, and then um, Leon is our new um, dean of enrollment management. That's really important. How do we bring more women into the business school? How do we bring more persons of color into the business school? How do we bring in more diversity into the business school? How many of you guys are facing this issue as businesses? Come on, raise your hands. A lot of you. So you can't address it until we address it. We've got to get them in. So I, I, yes, I'm a zealot about this. I want to go into kindergarten now and start talking about Villanova school business because I want them to understand that they can have a great career in business uh, and that it's exciting to be in business. And if you have good math skills, we'll take you in business. Yes, you can go into engineering, that's okay. But we'd love to have you in, we would love to have you in business. We'd love for you to be in finance and accounting and analytics and marketing and these things. Um, and then I mentioned um, a lot of change we're seeing in um, the graduate space. That model has really changed. Those students are no longer really supported by their companies to come back to get the degree. So they're having to fund it themselves. So um, they're very competitive. Uh, our, I, you know, I tell this to our admissions team and they know it, that um, our admissions people can't just be admissions people, they have to be business development people. They have to go look for business in the sense that, because the students out there, they have so many choices. And here, they have a lot of choices. And so they have to be um, really aggressive. We have to be able to provide what's in it for you. Um, tuitions have gone up for graduate programs all around the country and so students are saying, why do I want to give up some salary to go back to school? What's the ROI for me, right? Uh, and so how am I going to quickly gain that money back and be successful? Uh, and they want more career advising and sort of more white glove treatment because they're actually paying more, so they should get those kind of things. And then other things that I've seen is globalization. You know, this is music to Jonathan's ears, I'm sure. Where is he back there? Uh, yes, he's really excited about that. There we go. Um, because Schools are lining themselves up with strategic partners in the global space, and that's very important. Um, the business curriculum, I think all of you would agree. I hear this from employers and executives all the time. It's great that students have strong technical skills, but could you get them to talk? Could you get them to have strong emotional resiliency? Could they deal with failure? Can they work with other people? So those kinds of programs, and we're doing some of those great things here, uh, but that's what's happening in, in the landscape. And then alumni. They love to come back in the business landscape and network with each other and have socials, but they also want more learning. So how do we create those opportunities? So our goals, just a few thoughts moving forward, um, and I have had a chance to talk to um, our senior leadership team, is what's our, what are we doing next? What's our strategic plan to ensure that we're always financially secure, that we're growing our revenue, to build our infrastructure to support a lot of these things that we just talked about in terms of the faculty, the staff, the programs, and the student experience. Uh, somebody asked a question earlier about how do you always make sure as you move into those national rankings that you keep that Villanova student experience, which we are highly committed to keeping, right? That's really important. Um, and I think a couple other things, I just want to ensure that we're a best place to work. Um, Lee and I have already talked about, you can rank just like businesses, you can rank best places to work for companies, you can do that for universities too. And so that would help us continue to attract and retain top talent, whether that's faculty, whether that's staff, um, we want to make sure they're all really engaged. Um, and then just remembering that, what's our core? You know, our core is our Augustinian values and our mission. And we can never forget that because otherwise we're just another business school, right? That's really important. So I think I talked about this. This is what we're going to be doing next. 
um, in terms of what I'm going to be doing next. I'm working with the team, sort of this listen and learning tour. Um, we're really working on our strategic plan in the spring, and I will be reaching out to people in here to help us with that process because I strongly believe in partnering with the business community to, as we move forward in that plan and really figuring out what is it that we can really, um, what's really unique that we can sell out there in the marketplace to help people understand our brand proposition because they're asking those questions, right? So I just want to say thank you um, to all of you for being our partners. Um, I, I think these are just incredibly exciting times. Everybody says, isn't there a lot of pressure coming into the number one ranked school? <sighs> yeah. So, but as I tell, you know, Father Peter always looks at me and says, you know, we're the number one ranked school. And, uh, you know, like, don't mess it up. And I'm like, Father Peter, our goal is we're going to be number one in the world now. That's what we're focusing on. So I just want to thank all of you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for the impact that I keep hearing about from our faculty, for you supporting them, from our staff, and from our students. Um, you know, you heard the students talk about Professor Sue Metzger and the other faculty they've worked with. But you all have been incredible partners. Um, that's fantastic for me starting out. So I just want to say thank you. And with that, I'm done my part. Yes. <laughs>